Peter Harrington's new catalogue is on leadership um, and exploring the theme of leadership, what leadership is, and that's both kings and prime ministers and presidents and queens, all the political leaders that you know about and you think about. There's also leaders of expeditions, leaders of voyages, leaders of social movements, leaders of religions, and uh, hopefully exploring what it means to be a leader and what it feels like to be a leader, the difficulty of being a leader, the burdens, and the isolation of a decision maker. You have to make decisions which affect other people. Um, and ultimately, that is just you. Uh, the catalogue has includes uh, five centuries of print history, dating back to the early 16th century, all the way up to recent books about recent uh, political figures. Um, and it covers both the leaders themselves and also uh, political theorists, the thinkers in their armchair, telling leaders how to act um, and uh, prescribing what a leader should do. And they're not the ones making the decision. And it's exploring that disconnect between the, uh, the leader in their seat of power and the writer in their armchair. This is one of the highlights of the new leadership catalogue, uh, the first edition of the official account of the Lewis and Clark expedition, the most important expedition in United States history, and ranking with Columbus, with Magellan, with Cook in world history. Uh, for the first time, an expedition went from the east coast of America to the west coast of America. It was initiated by President Thomas Jefferson, who purchased from Napoleon uh, the Louisiana Purchase, which effectively doubled the size of the young United States. And the expedition was both to find out what they had bought and also to uh, probe the possibility of future Western expansion of the United States to the Pacific. And that is what the two men who led the expedition, Lewis and Clark, were instructed to do to get to the Pacific and get back, and importantly, uh, to try and find an all-water route. That means that you can get from the east coast of America to the west coast by water, by boat, and that would mean that the east and west coast of America really could be connected. Um, and ultimately, that was one respect they failed. They did not find an all-water route, um, and that form of connection they, they didn't succeed in finding. Um, but in every other respect, this was an extraordinary achievement. Uh, the two men shared the uh, leadership and that is something that you very rarely see it break all the rules of military protocol. You do not have divided authority. You do not have two people sharing the same position but that is what they did with Lewis and Clark. Um, and the two men complimented each other very well. This huge and arduous expedition went off without any major conflict. There was no dispute. They fought off as, as of one mind. Um, and the two men complimented each other's personalities. Lewis, as tragically as well known, was a depressive character, and before this book was published, he had committed suicide. Um, but at least during the expedition, Clark, who was a much more steadfast uh, character, could offset that aspect of his personality, and, and the two men were able to keep their group um, together, uh, to face the hardships, the winter, uh, the animals, uh, meeting many Native American tribes, mostly leading these initial contacts peacefully. Um, it was unfortunately a harbinger of what to come, but these tribes were going to be displaced from the land which Lewis and Clark were exploring. Uh, they also were not consulted about the purchase which Jefferson made, but at least in these first, con uh, first contacts, uh, Lewis and Clark were peaceful and they, they skillfully negotiated these, these early contacts with these tribes. And of course, as is well known, um, they met with Sacagawea, a Native American guide who was absolutely essential. They made it to the Pacific. Uh, this map, which is one of the... Yeah, what really makes this book is this map, which was um, based off what they saw and, and, and what they wrote down at the time. And this is the first map that really shows the east to the west coast of America in detail. The mountains, the rivers, the plains. Before that, this was white space on a map. You've seen those maps where America is just whiteness out into the west. This is now filled in um, and it's ready for those 50 states which are going to spread out. Um, they made this map then also lets you trace where they went from here over in the east coast of the Atlantic and all the way west to where they finally made it to the Pacific Ocean where it was cold and wet and rainy and famously, uh, they called it Cape Disappointment and they were there and was not seeing any kind of promised land um, and they were waiting for a boat which never came and they had to turn around and walk all the way back. 
But at that coast, they made a decision which I think is a credit to their leadership. Uh, they had to decide where to winter uh, and they put it to a vote. Um, so the two men, rather than saying this is what we're doing, they let everyone on the expedition vote and that was important. Firstly, it's the first known democratic vote on the uh, Pacific, uh, the Pacific Northwest. Um, but it's also important because Sacagawea was there, which means it's the first recorded incident in American history where women voted. And also Clark took his personal slave York with him. And uh, York was also given a vote on equal terms, meaning this is the first incident uh, in history where a African-American took part in a democratic vote. Why does Lewis and Clark's expedition matter? Um, well, before they set out, America is a collection of Eastern colonies clinging to the Atlantic. Its face is towards the Old World. Afterwards, they're looking out to the West. They saw the resources, the plains, the water, the, the mountains and minerals which would make America a superpower, and they set the trail that millions of pioneers would follow over in the 19th century, uh, like them on foot, like them by river, and later by rail and every other way to populate um, America with people from the old world and ultimately displace the tribes who, for many of them, the first time they knew of people from the old world was when they met Lewis and Clark. Um, an extraordinary achievement, a unique instant of leadership because leadership is very rarely split. I mean, how many, not a single nation today is, is run by two presidents or two prime ministers. Uh, you always have one leader, don't you? But they did this expedition, they had two leaders, they shared leadership and it was a triumph. It's a different way of looking at how things could be done um, and, and it proved a great success and it's just enormously influential in American history.